All right, we got our story pole. Now let's just undo these two screws, move it up where it's supposed to be, and then do the other side at the same time. Okay, we know everything is square and level now. We're gonna trim this out two different ways. One way is we're gonna overhang the style to the inside of the cabinet, and then the style will be flush on the edge of the cabinet. The other way, flush it on the inside of the cabinet, and then it's gonna be overhung on the outside of the cabinet. Okay, when you, okay, we got our side styles cut. But now we have our rails, got three of them, we cut them all the same length. Doesn't matter if you're gonna have one drawer and a door, or if you're gonna have one, two, three, four drawers. Doesn't matter, you wanna cut them all the same. We're gonna do the one that's gonna be flush on the inside, so we're gonna put it on first, and then do our one that's gonna be hung over on the inside. Now there's one thing I wanted to show you that's kinda interesting. If on the bottom you wanted to have a wider in other words a wider style for some odd reason or another then you need to cut your side or excuse me a bottom rail if you wanted a bigger bottom rail then you would have to cut your side styles that extra length so that you can get the length because if you only cut these things the length of the cabinet, then your what would happen? Your style would come down to there, and then you'd have this vacant spot there. But since it's it's the cabinet plus the rail, then you're going to be able to come down and have that bigger looking rail down there. Some people like that, some people don't, because the door is going to cover it anyway. But then this might be an open cabinet. So, I mean, there's a thousand different ways that you can do that. So, anyway, and I'm a, I'm, now that I'm into this, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, believer in recycling everything. All this lumber I'm using is all recycled. this side style on and then the other side. Now this is the one that's gonna this is the one that's gonna overhang the box. The other one is the one that's gonna over the other one is the one that's gonna overhang the cabinet on the inside. This one's on the outside. You're pretty much done with the cabinet other than putting the drawer in and then we're going to do about three different types of doors and the same way with the, with the drawer we're going to do some different drawer guides. Well this is what I'm talking about. See how this, this side is not overhung. See how this side is overhung. You, you know sand down your style and get it all set up. So these are the type of, well first it's going to be the the drawer guides and what we have here um, some of y'all might be familiar with this monorail it goes in the center of the cabinet the thing that replaces it is this this monorail that mounts flatways this piece could stay in this goes all the way to the front This would mount right there. This piece would slide out. And then the back would mount in the back like the monorail did. And so this one takes the place of the monorail, which is this one. This is the real old style from years ago. They're very seldom ever used anymore because everything has gone to the side mounts that mount inside the cabinet this way. 
And then the next thing we're going to get into is the hinges. These are not the hardest ones to put in. They don't make the hardest ones anymore. They were used to be knife hinges. Oh boy, I know some of the old fellers like me would probably remember them. And uh, they were a real booger bear to put in. These were a lot simpler. And uh, what these do, these would mount like that with your with your hinge pin sticking out and the door would close inside the cabinet itself so when you make the cabinet door it's got to be pretty precise in order to have the same reveal all the way around it so in that case your cabinet had to be pretty much right on to the uh, to the opening of the cabinet but the only problem I don't like about them is they, they're mortised in, which that's a real pain. So back then they used to use, a long time ago, they used to use dovetail saws. And uh, I've got one and I'll show you how it works. I mean, it was a real pain to do them, but it was the only thing they had. They didn't have routers back then. Okay, and then came the overlay hinge. Now the overlay hinges were great. Everybody loved them in the cabinet business. You could make your door didn't have to be go on the inside it went on the outside and it could be you know it could be a half inch bigger which means you could have a quarter inch an overhang on each side and the top and the bottom and you can still be a quarter inch bigger and it still work the only the only thing is in case you needed a reveal a certain amount of reveal in between door and door but that was never a problem and then of course then the hinges mount there and they could go pretty much anywhere on the style in order to move them around. Then you just put one screw in there, get them both in, and then you would adjust whichever way the door needed to go, up or down, back or forth, take the screw out, and then do whatever you need to do to line it up with whatever, the, the drawer front or the, the next door beside it or whatever. Then came the European hinges and uh, I was quite amazed when these things first came out because uh, they were totally concealed and uh, at first they were a real they were a real pain to, to work with but uh, once you had the tools and the know-how it was really quite simple and this this part would be drilled into the back of the door and then you would mount your two screws and then there's a face plate on here and it gives you the distance over so in other words these hang over these are an overlay door also so they hang over the cabinet on either side and you could just about you could go from around three quarters about down to where it was actually pretty much inset not inset as far as in setting but as far as coming back to the edge of the door you could set it into the edge of the door or if you wanted them to inset you could get the certain hinge that would mount farther back and then you could inset the door inside the cabinet so we will we'll do those those two the inset and the overlay with these type of hinges and show you all the adjustments on it 